so uh, we're gonna do an interesting um, an interesting walk here we're gonna walk through scriptures last night I was reading about Bekurim Bekurim Beku Beku Bekurim <laughs> and uh, which means giving God your best and what it is it's giving him your first fruits the first fruits of you um, yourself your personal self like your prayers your things so there were really a lot of questions in there that gave me food for thought because first of all it was kind of the first time I really grasped this bikurim and um, the first fruits and it's the first fruits of the seven species only so this and this is not done before Shavuot it says in Exodus 23:16 that this is actually for the harvest, for the feast of the Shavuot harvest. First fruits, that's what Shavuot is for. And um, so in, in uh, Deuteronomy 26, 5, what this represents is it reflects a spiritual journey from self-reliance to reliance on God instead of ourselves. Um, Adonai brought us out of Egypt with a strong hand and an outstretched arm with great terror and signs and wonders. So this, this bikurim, which is from the root word bikor, which is firstborn, bikurim, first fruits. So anyway, the first fruits of yourself. What is the first fruits of yourself? So the thought was give God the first 10 minutes of each day the first 10 minutes so when you open your eyes don't move just turn over grab the word and say God here I am give me a scripture we're gonna do this together the first 10 minutes I started this on um, June the 5th Wednesday June the 5th Thursday it was um, Tuesday night that I was reading about Bikurim and it just peaked my... So anyway, on Wednesday, we started. And I said, Lord, give me a scripture. First thing happened, he opens the Bible. And I love it. Because what I allow him to do is open the Bible himself. I don't try to take it someplace. I just want it to open where he wants it to open. I want him to speak to my heart. So that's what you, what's going to happen here. You're going to... Um, and this is going to be interesting because I'm just going to read them and read them. And we'll see how they connect. Because each time he gives me a scripture... It seems to be connecting back to another scripture that I've already had. Okay, so we're going to start with Jeremiah 1, 1, our first day, Wednesday, June 6th. We had Jeremiah 1, and it was 5 through 10. Here is the word of Adonai that came to me. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I separated you from myself. I have appointed you to be a prophet to the nations. And I said, oh, Adonai Elohim, I don't even know how to speak. But Adonai said to me, don't say, I'm just, I don't know how to speak. For you will go to whomever, whomever I send you, and you will speak whatever I order you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you, says Adonai, to rescue you. What he's saying is he's going to be our mouthpiece. <laughs> then Adonai put out his hand and touched my mouth, and Adonai said to me, there, I have put my words in your mouth. Today, I have placed you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and to tear down, to destroy and to demolish, to build and to plant. This, then, when he gave me this scripture, it says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I separated you from myself. I have appointed you to be a prophet to the nations. Right away, that scripture took me to Isaiah 49. And we're going to go visit that right now. Okay, what does uh, Isaiah 49 say? It says in 49, um, kind of picks up at the end of one. Adonai called me from the womb. Before I was born, he had spoken my name. Adonai called me from the womb. Before I was born, he had spoken my name. He has made my mouth like a sharp sword while hiding me in the shadow of his hand. He has made me like a sharpened arrow while concealing me in his quiver. He said to me, you are my servant Israel, through whom I will show my glory. 
So now Adonai says he formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Yaakov back to him so that he will be honored, so that I will be honored in the sight of Adonai, my God, having become my strength. This is his harvest. This is what he's talking about, the harvest. Then down here it says, because of Adonai, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen me. At the time when I choose, I will answer you. On the day of salvation, I will help you. I preserved you, and I have appointed you. And then over here it says, um, where I've been great, can a woman forget her child? Even if these were to forget, I would not forget you. I've engraved you in the palms of my hands. Your walls, your salvations are always before me. And he keeps talking about sending me to the nations. I'm beckoning to the nations. Raising my banner for the peoples, they will bring their sons in their arms and carry your daughters on their shoulders. This is so powerful here. Kings will be your foster fathers, the princes, your nurses. They will bow to you face toward the earth and lick the dust of your feet. Then you will know that I am Adonai. Those who wait for me will not be sorry. Praise God. So that's, that's um, Isaiah 49. Now we're going to go to another companion scripture. Okay, since we're in Isaiah, we're going to go to Isaiah 43. I'm just showing you how, how God keeps walking you through scriptures just to confirm himself. So Isaiah 43, but now this is what Adonai says. He who created you, he who formed you, Israel, don't be afraid for I have redeemed you. I'm calling you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through water, I will be with you. When you pass through rivers, they will not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you will not be scorched. The flame will not burn you. For I, Adonai, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior, I am Adonai, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Because I regard you as valued and honored, and because I love you. For you, I will give people nations in exchange for your life. Don't be afraid, for I'm with you. Everyone who bears my name, whom I created for my glory, I formed him. Yes, I made him. This is what the Lord keeps telling me over and over and over and over. I formed you. I'm shaping you, I'm growing you, I'm preparing you. And here, of course, this scripture was given to me in 1980. Isaiah 43, 18. Stop dwelling on past events and brooding over times gone by. I'm doing something new. It's springing up. Can't you see it? I'm making a road in the desert and rivers in the wasteland. For my chosen people to drink, I put water in the desert and rivers in the wasteland for my chosen people to drink. The people I formed for myself so that they would proclaim my praise. Now we're going to go to one more scripture that's going to bear this out yet again. And this is absolutely one of my favorites. This is Psalm 39. 139, I'm sorry. 139. Adonai, you have probed me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I stand up. You discern my inclinations from afar. You scrutinize my daily activities. You are so familiar with all my ways that before I speak even a word, Adonai, you know all about it already. You have hemmed me in both behind and in front and laid your hand on me. Such wonderful knowledge is beyond me, far too high for me to reach. And it goes on to say, where can I go to escape you? Where can I flee from your presence if I climb into heaven? No, even there your hand would lead me, your right hand would hold me fast. And it goes on, and then it says, For you fashioned, in verse 13, For you fashioned my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Again, you formed me. I thank you because I am awesomely made, wonderfully. Your works are wonders. I know this very well. My bones were not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, formed by you, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes could see me as an embryo, but in your book all my days were already written. My days had been shaped before any of them had existed. It's just incredible. You, oh, God gives you one scripture, and all of these other scriptures here that I've, just, that I've just read tie to Jeremiah 1. And that was the first day, June 6th, I got my first scripture for the day. And look at how it opened up all that God has spoken to me 
over the course of this last year and year and a bit. <laughs> so now we're going to go to Thursday, June seventh. Do I want to just where it says Adonai, you've been our dwelling place in every generation before the mountains were born. Before you had formed the earth and the world from eternity past to eternity future, you are God. Bear in mind, from before anything, you were. This, and God, it says here, from eternity past to eternity future, you are God. God is the oldest, longest, living thing. Before the earth, before there was any form or void, before there was anything, there was God. And think of this. Before there was anything, there was God. Then there was us. We were spirit. We were soul. We were nefesh before we came into a body. We dwelt with him. Where it says, from before anything, you were. We were from before anything. Like it says, Yeshua says, I was with him from before, you know, and going back well the same thing with us think of it this way we were before from before anything we were then we became nefesh, we became a body like Yeshua put on flesh we put on flesh then Yeshua at the crucifixion he returned when he gave his life for us then he returned to when he came where he, his original, where he originated from. When we go in the rapture, we're returning to where we originated from. So Yeshua was before anything. We were before anything with Yeshua. He put on flesh. His nefesh, his soul became flesh and dwelt among us. Likewise, we became flesh. He rose and returned to, to from before anything he was. He returned to the, to the right hand of God, seated at the throne. We're seated right with him. This is the incredible part of all of this. We're seated right with him, and we will return to from before anything we were. And we will be right there seated with him. And then we return with him as his glory. This is like the most beautiful thing that I've ever <laughs> I've seen, and it's going to expand into even more. So just stay tuned. Okay, so remember in, in uh, Psalms 90, we read in, in verse 3, you bring frail mortals to the point of being crushed. Then say people repent. Let's go back to Egypt. Let's go back to Genesis. In Genesis fifteen thirteen, it says, Know this for certain, your descendants, uh, Adonai speaking to Abraham, Know this for certain, your descendants will be foreigners in a land that is not theirs. They will be slaves and held in oppression there 400 years. So that's bringing mere mortals to crushing. They were crushed in Egypt. They were slaves. They were beaten and tortured. Once again, now we're going to go. The next place we're off to is Isaiah 53. So hang on. Now the entire chapter of Isaiah 53 is extremely profound to me um, but I'm not going to go through all of it right now this is this is a a chapter that the Lord has personally walked me through and rewritten this chapter to suit my journey but one of the things that we're going to go to today in in relation to Psalms 90 talks about although he had done no violence and he had said nothing deceptive, yet it pleased Adonai to crush him with illness. To see if he would present himself as a guilt offering. If he would truly put himself on the altar, give up his will, and say, not my will, Lord, but your will be done. 
die to self, pick up God's will, would he do it? And he did. And he did. He presented himself as that guilt offering. He gave up his will. He died to his flesh. He took up the Father's will. This is our testing and crushing to see if we will take up our cross and follow him, if we will take our cup of affliction as he did. That's why he sweat blood. God will never ask us to sweat blood, but he is into crushing. And he asked me if I was willing to allow him to crush me with illness, that he would allow me to produce much fruit for his kingdom. Because he says, at my hand, Adonai's desires will be accomplished for me to complete the work of reconciliation that Yeshua began. By his knowing pain and sacrifice, suffering, crushing, my servant, meaning me, makes many righteous. It is for their sins that you suffer. So by my knowing pain, suffering, loss, grief, rejection, all of it, Many will be saved, healed, and restored through my suffering. As it is for these, he says, I am suffering. So I just, I just want to show how there are many scriptures in the Bible. But these are the, the three that God gave me today, Thursday, this day, June 7th. And uh, you notice how they all tie together. And this keeps happening over and over. And you'll see as we continue because we have a lot of these to do. But I just wanted to get started with this so you can see how God gave us your scripture and all of these scriptures that follow, that bear them out, are scriptures he's already given me. And they're very profound scriptures. There's a lot in my scriptures about, you know, crushing and things I'm going to do because he's speaking directly with me. We're beginning to um, walk through scripture as he gives me an answer. Like today, I asked him a question. Today is June 23rd, and I asked him a question today, Sunday, June 23rd. I needed, I needed a scripture to uh, bear out some, something that I'm praying about for somebody that I've been doing mitzvahs of kind, you know, chesed for. And um, anyway, he gave me the most amazing scripture that gave me such shalom with what I'm doing. It was in Zechariah. So if you too seek God, just ask him, and he'll give you the scriptures. If he doesn't speak to you directly, he'll speak to you through his word, and he'll teach you how to listen to him as he walks you through his word. So now we're going to go to Friday, um, June the 8th. Okay, so now we're going to pick up with Friday, which is where we left off. This is Friday, I believe we're at um, June the 7th. So today was Joel 2, which was kind of amazing. We've been here a lot. But anyway, we're going to go through what God gave me this morning, or this particular morning, for Joel chapter 2. We're going to go first to Joel 2, 23 to 27. Well, no, first of all, we're going to back up. We have to go to Joel 2, um, 11. That's where we actually started. And that's kind of one of my favorite places because God deals with me a lot about his army. And this is what it is. Adonai shouts orders to his forces. His army is immense and mighty. And it does what he says. For great is the day of Adonai, fearsome and terrifying. Who can endure it? Well, that's his army of saints, and that's going to be us. And in order for us to have the power with God, we must yield to God. And here where it says, For great is the day of Adonai, fearsome, terrifying, who can endure it? Even in judgment, God is going to have mercy. And going on to verse 12, Yet even now, says Adonai, turn to me with all your heart. That means repent, turn, shuv. This is the hour to respond to his mercies. To return to him means to return to your prayer life. So that's what, and we need to return with all of our hearts when we repent. Because it really is all about God. It's not about us. 
And the Lord literally says, tear your heart, not your garments, and turn to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate. Slow to anger, rich in grace, and willing to change his mind about disaster. Who knows, he may turn, change his mind, and leave a blessing behind him. Enough for grain offerings and drink offerings to present to Adonai, your God. So there it just shows you what a merciful and loving God that he is. So now we're going to go to verse 23. For he is giving you the right amount of rain in the fall. He makes the rain come down for you. And of course, rain, we know, is always God's blessings poured out abundantly. And here, it's pouring out abundantly. The fall and the springs rained. This is what he does first. Then the floors will be full of grain and the vats overflow with the wine and the olive oil. That's abundance. That means abundance. God is going to bless you with abundance. And in verse 25, he says, I will restore to you the years that the locusts ate. The grasshoppers, shearworms, cutting worms. My great army that I sent against you, you will eat until you are satisfied and will praise the name of Adonai your God who has done with you such wonders. Then my people will never again be shamed. You will know that I am with Israel and that I am Adonai your God, that there is no other. Then my people will never again be ashamed. God will restore. That's the point. Again, we're in the year of restoration, 5779. All things shall be restored. But that's what God is saying here. I will restore to you all that the locusts have eaten. What has been robbed from you and stolen from you, from the enemy, from the devil, your, your afflictions, you know, loss and everything. God is going to restore it all. He promises. So hang on to that promise because he says he's going to give you the right amount of rain in the fall. And make the rain come down upon you. That's his blessings. And that's what we're talking about here. God's blessings. And then we're going to go on. It's depending on what Bible you're in. It's either five, no, 3, 5 or 232. Joel still. At the time, whoever calls. In my Bible, it happens to be um, 232. Chapter 2, verse 32. At the time, whoever calls on the name of Adonai will be saved. For Adonai has promised, among the remnant will be those whom Adonai has called. There will be those who escape, as Adonai has promised, among the remnant will be those whom Adonai, Adonai has called. Remember, we have to be called, we have to be chosen. And over and over and over in these scriptures, you're hearing about being called, being chosen. Here's about the remnant. The remnant are the ones that are called and chosen. So that was Friday's scriptures. And out of that, I was blessed so much. Because, again, all that the locusts have eaten shall be restored. So all the loss that I've suffered over these last years, I'm, the Lord's going to restore. All things shall be restored. He's telling me also to turn, no matter what's going on. Turn now with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding. But in all ways, look to him in all things. And he's telling us that we're the army, that he's preparing to go forth. So let's get ready because we are the army and we need to go forth. And he's speaking to us here. He's telling us all the blessings, but he also says we are the army and we are the remnant that he's chosen and called. So let's get ready because uh, we're going to be going to the nations. Now we're going to go on to Shabbat Saturday. Okay, Saturday, Shabbat, was a, just an incredible day. The Lord was showing me again in Psalms 102 and 69 my journey and he just keeps speaking to you know it's, it's everything he's given me is coming back and so when I opened up Psalms 102 I was just blown away because at the day on the day that he gave me this it was a it was a very kind of dark dark time and I was crying out and so it's basically me, the Lord showing me David, 
And there's a whole thing about David, and we're not going to go into all of that now, but David is big in, in my life. And so here we're going to start with Psalms 102. This is um, the prayer of a sufferer overcome by weakness and pouring out his heart to Almighty God. Adonai, hear my prayer. Let my cry for help reach you. Don't hide your face from me when I am in such distress. Turn your ear toward me when I call. Be quick to reply. For my days are vanishing like smoke. My bones are burning like a furnace. I am stricken and withered like grass. I forget to eat my food. Because of my loud groaning, I am just skin and bones. This is, this is despair. And if anyone really understands David, David's whole life was a life of despair. And when we get to the next chapter in Psalms that the Lord took me to this morning, you'll hear David's heart. It's my heart, and this is, and this is why Lord, the Lord keeps bringing me to, to David. So I lie awake and become like a bird alone on the roof. And this particular section just blew me away because I was literally saying these words to, <laughs> to Abba. My enemies taunt me all day long, for I've been eating ashes like bread and mingling my tears with drink. They make my name a curse. And now I mingle my tears with my drink because of your furious anger, Adonai, since you picked me up just to toss me aside. Why have you tossed me aside, Lord? <laughs> David is saying, and I'm saying, some days you'll feel like God has just tossed you aside. Where is he? What's going on? What's he doing? See, here's David himself. The, I mean, God loved David so much, and David loved God so much, and yet David's saying, you picked me up just to toss me aside? And this day that I was in such despair, I was where David was, and I was crying out to God, you picked me up just to toss me aside. My days decline like an evening shadow. I'm drying up like grass. You have broken my strength in mid-course. You have cut short my days. I plead, God, your years last through all generations. So don't take me away when my life is half over. And what the Lord is showing me is he's not going to take me away. He's just, he's training me just like he did David. Then the Lord took me to Psalm 69. Now this has been, gosh, since last year, one of my favorite scriptures. Not even totally understanding the understanding I have today. This is completely, this is all about David and him pouring out his heart to God in such despair. And when I do the teaching on David, we'll hear about David's life and how, how much in despair he was. It was just, it was sad. So I come to Psalm 69 and I think, oh my goodness. Listen to this, how it parallels Psalms 102. It speaks to the very heart of crying out to God. And picture David. Save me, God, for the water threatens my life. I'm sinking down in the mud and there's no foothold. I've come into deep water. The flood is sweeping over me. I'm exhausted from crying. My throat is dry and sore. My eyes are worn out with looking for my God. You know, sometimes we just feel like God has left us, even though in his word, he'll never leave nor forsake us. In Psalms 139, he says, he's with us even if we go to the pit of hell. So we know he never leaves or forsakes us. But sometimes it just feels that way. You can't trace him. And there are times that you need him and you're crying out, God, where are you? Just know that he's at work. Just as he was at work for David, he's at work for each and every one of us. And this is what he's showing me through all these scriptures. Yes, there are times that are not good. But he's going to be with us through all those times. And he's going to bring us out with great honor. That is what he's saying here. The next verse. 
Those who hate me for no reason outnumber the hairs on my head. My persecutors are powerful. My enemies accuse me falsely. Am I expected to return things I didn't steal? David at this time was being accused of all kinds of things. And they were even saying that he had to restore certain things and he, he didn't even take them away from them. And yet they're saying, they're telling him, you got to give it back. He never took it away. That's why he's saying, am I expected to return things I didn't steal? God, you know how foolish I am. My guilt is not hidden from you. Let those who put their hope in you, Adonai Elohim Savaot, not be put to shame through me. Let those who are seeking you, God of Israel, not be disgraced through me. What David is saying is don't let his stumbling and his grief and, and where he's at be a stumbling block to those that are seeking Adonai. I've said the same thing to God. Don't let my weakness be a stumbling block to others. And the Lord is showing me. The reason the Lord is showing me this is because I kept saying, he must, he must not like me anymore, you know? And the truth be known, it's just, this is, this is David talking. So we're in good company. We just have to understand that God sometimes has to be silent and has to not be traced so that we can learn. And it's a hard, hard thing to accept, but it's the way he works. So it's just, you have to accept it because it's the way he is. So again, going on in verse 8, for your sake I suffer insults. Yes, I do. Oftentimes I suffer a lot of insults, but the word says, we will be persecuted and suffer on behalf of Yeshua. He did, why shouldn't we? The apostles did, why shouldn't we? Shame covers my face. I'm estranged from my brothers, and yes, that's a fact. And an alien to my mother's children. Yes, that's a fact. I have no communication with my family anymore. Because, Lord, your zeal for your house is eating me up. And I tell him this all the time. That my love and my passion for him is almost destroying me. It's so intense. And I feel sometimes like I just can't measure up. I can't get there. And yet I'm just, it's I just all so intense. And, um, but that's how I feel. My, my zeal for your house is eating me up. And on me are falling the insults of those insulting you. And that's a fact. And it just makes me so sad. Um... And then we're going to go on over here. As for me, Adonai, let my prayer to you come at an acceptable time. In your great grace, God, answer me with the truth of your salvation. Rescue me from the bud. Don't let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and from the deep water. Don't let the flood waters overwhelm me. Don't let the deep swallow me up. Don't let the pit close its mouth over me, Lord. Answer me, Adonai, for your grace is good. In your great mercy, turn to me. Don't hide your face from your servant. For I am in trouble. Answer me quickly. Come near to me and redeem me. Ransom me from my enemies. You know how I am insulted, shamed, and disgraced. Before you stand, all my foes, Lord, to the point that I could die. I hoped that someone would show compassion, but nobody did. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've said that to God. If someone would just show me some love, some compassion, just something, just something. And here's David. I hoped that someone would show compassion, but nobody did, and I got none either. And that there would be comforters, but I found none. They put poison in my food, and my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Who does that sound like? Our own Yeshua. And so we think that we shouldn't have these issues. What the Lord is showing me, and here I have a note in my Bible that I wrote on February 5th at 4.30 a.m. in the morning. When God gave me this, Psalm 69, he was comparing me this morning to Joseph, to Yosef, as he was there in the pit. He tried to stop the fall, nothing to hang on to. He was falling, falling. He stuck in the mud. It was dark. There was no God. Help. No compassion. No comfort. Came from nowhere. Poisoned me. Tried to poison me. Tried to kill me. They hate me. 
with God, he was with God, and then not. Can't find him, can't trace him. He cries out. I cry out. David cries out. God hears and answers at his appointed time being processed to an already prepared for you to do. That's what's happening here. We're being processed to an already prepared for you to do. So that was Friday's scriptures, and I should just, it sort of just blew me away. Just blew me away. Then on Sunday, he took us to Proverbs 8. And Proverbs 8 We're going to go, uh, I have to get a different Bible to go through this one because the Lord asked me to use a different Bible this day. So, The Bible that God wanted to use uh, on this particular one, Proverbs 8, is the ESV Bible. For those of you that don't know, it's English Standard Version Bible. And periodically he, he literally says ESV. So that's what we went to today. And this is going to be Proverbs 8. He took me to a very special place. And it says in Proverbs 8, 22, The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of old. Ages ago I was set up at the first before the beginning of the earth. The Lord is constantly telling me that I was before with him, before all things. Um... It's an interesting thing. I'm not going to go into it all here, but there are so many of these scriptures he keeps repeating over and over and over to me to show me. And he's showing me in particular um, that, that uh, I'm Jewish. All right? And so, um, anyway, that just blew my socks off again because yet again he's reiterating that the Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of old. Ages ago I was set up at the first before the beginning of the earth. Then we're going to go down to Proverbs 8.32. Blessed are those who keep my ways and listen to me. O sons, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise. And do not neglect it. Blessed is the one who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting beside my doors. For whoever finds me finds life and attains, obtains favor from the Lord. So our whole goal is to seek him, to listen, to keep his ways, to not neglect listening or following him, because we will be blessed. Blessed is the one who listens and watches daily at his gates. In other words, you're waiting for bated breath for the Lord to guide you, to lead you in the way that you should go because you have a purpose and a plan that was already prepared for you to do. It says in the scriptures in Corinthians and it says in Psalms 139, all your days were already written. So you have things to do and that's what God is telling us here. And if you're called and if you've been chosen like he keeps telling me, then you were with him before the foundation of the earth. And uh, in these scriptures, as we've been recording, there I've already ta- spoken to that very thing. So that was Psalms 90, and we went through all of that. But now we're going forward. You can just see every single day how God just keeps, just keeps testifying to himself as to what he's done in my life and what he's continuing to do. And now he's just, he's just uh, confirming and confirming all that he's spoken before to just keep me encouraged, to let me know. It's all still here. It's all happening. It's all coming. So the next thing we went to, then he took me from Proverbs 8 to Psalms 107. And Psalms 107 is an amazing psalm to me. As a matter of fact, I did a teaching called The Winds of Adversity on this uh, psalm. And while I'm not going to go into... um, that whole thing, the winds of it, you, you, well, it'll come out as we, as we read this. I'm just going to start at the beginning of this psalm, and we'll discuss it as we go. It's just an incredible psalm, and it has blessed me so much. So, um, 107, Psalms 107, verse 1. 
Give thanks to Adonai, for he is good, for his grace continues forever. Let those redeemed by Adonai say it, those he redeemed from the power of the foe. He gathered them from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and, f and uh, from the sea. Now I'm going to back up here because where it says, Give thanks to Adonai, for he is good, for his grace continues. Let those redeemed by Adonai say it, those he redeemed from the power of the foe. Yeshua himself defeated sin and death for us all. He redeemed me by his sacrifice and has covered me with the blood of righteousness. That's what that's saying. Those he redeemed from the power of the foe. He gathered them from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the sea. The Holy Spirit, where it says right here, he gathered them from the lands. That's the Holy Spirit drawing. Drawing all men unto He redeemed from the power of the foe. That was Yeshua himself that did that. He redeemed us by his sacrifice, and he covered us with the blood of righteousness. Then he gathered them from the lands, from the east and from the west and from the north and from the sea. Okay, again, Holy Spirit drawing, gathering, sending out the hunters and the gatherers. This is really profound. They wandered in the desert on paths through the wastes without finding any inhabited city. They wandered in the desert. That's the Bamidbar, the Arba. That's the wilderness that the Lord had them wandering and wandering in the wilderness. But in their trouble, they cried out to Adonai, and he rescued them from their distress. He led them by a direct path to a city where they could live. Ultimately, we know that through the wilderness, they were on their way to Canaan. But this tells you that in their trouble, they cried to Adonai, and he rescued them from their distress. He rescues. He's the one that rescues. Remember, he rescues us in times of trouble and brings us out with great honor. That's what Psalms 91 says. Now here again, let us give thanks to Adonai for his grace, for his wonders bestowed on humanity. He has satisfied the hungry and filled the starving with that which is good. He satisfied the hungry. He feeds us with the bread, the bread of life, Yeshua himself. He's our provider. He's our provision. And the word uh, filled the starving with that which is good. The word is what is good. Yeshua himself. Some lived in darkness and death, dark gloom, bound in misery and chains. He humbled their hearts by hard labor. When they stumbled, no one came to their aid. This is when they were in Mitzrayim, Egypt. And, uh, and, but in their trouble, they cried out to Adonai and he heard their cries, and um, he rescued them from their distress. Here again, this is the second time in this psalm he said this. He led them from darkness, from death, dark gloom, shattering their chains. Now, let them give thanks to Adonai for his grace, for his wonders bestowed on humanity. There's that repeated again. Going on, there were foolish people who suffered affliction. Because of their crimes and sins. They didn't obey Yah, is what, what he's saying. But in their trouble, they cried out to Adonai, and he rescued them from their distress. This is the third time in this psalm he has said this. He sent his word. Who's his word? Yeshua. And he healed them. Yeshua. He himself bore our sickness and disease, and by his stripes we are healed. He healed us physically, emotionally, spiritually, in all ways. And proclaim his great deeds. Oh, I'm sorry. He delivered them from destruction. That's death. The death of the law of sin and death. Now we, now we have eternal life and we're seated next to him. Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and proclaim his great deeds with songs and joy. Let them give thanks to Adonai for his grace, for his wonders bestowed on humanity. There's the third time. Now listen to this. For at his words, the storm wind arose, lifting up towering waves. That's what's going to happen to you. At his word, your storms are going to rise in your life. That's the winds of adversity. And you're not going to know what's happening. But just look to him in your trouble. Remember, cry out to Adonai, and he'll rescue you from your distress. Not to worry. <laughs> 
Listen to this. The sailors were raised up to the sky, then plunged into the depths. At the danger, their courage failed them. They reeled and staggered like drunk men, and all their skill was swallowed up. That's us. When we're being tossed by the hurricanes of storms of life, and we're being, our courage is failing, and we're in fear and anxiety, and we're all, all stressed out. We're reeling, we're reeling and staggering like drunk people. All our skill is swallowed up because of ourselves, we can do nothing. But in their trouble, they cried to Adonai and he rescued them from their distress. He silenced the storm, he stilled its waves and they rejoiced as the sea grew calm. Then he brought them safely to their port, which he'll do for you. Just trust him in the storm. The apostles were out on the Sea of Galilee and they were crying out for Yeshua. He walked across the water and came to them. He silenced the waves. He silenced the storm. And he'll do the same thing in your life. Just look to him. Trust him in all things. Here again. Let them give thanks to Adonai for his grace, for his wonders bestowed on humanity. It's the fourth or fifth time that's appeared in this. Giving glory and honor to God through praise, worship, and study is what that means. And here it says, he turns rivers into desert, flowing springs into thirsty grounds. That's where he's removing his blessings when you're, when you're disobedient, which is why um, these wound up in, in, uh, in slavery. So don't be disobedient is the moral of the story. Listen, listen to what Yah wants you to do and do it. Just follow him. Because he also turns desert into pools of water, dry land into flowing springs. There he gives the hungry a home. They build a city to live in. There they sow fields and plant vineyards which yield an abundant harvest. That's Isaiah 53. I mean Isaiah 43. He, uh, rivers in the desert and paths in the wilderness. New beginnings. Divine blessings. Divine reversals. He blesses them. Their numbers grow and he doesn't let their livestock decrease. But when their numbers fall and they grow weak because of oppression, disaster, and sorrow. That's the evil one. He pours contempt on them. So he pours contempt on the evil one that is coming against his people because he protects us from the evil one. Remember that. And there's nothing more powerful than God. The enemy can do nothing to you that God does not allow. But the needy he raises up from their distress and increases their families like sheep. When the upright see this, they rejoice, while the wicked are reduced to silence. Let whoever is wise observe these things and consider Adonai's loving deeds. He's so loving and merciful and kind and gracious and wonderful. It's us that need to realize who our God is. And this is he's telling us right here. He rescues you in times of trouble. Not to say adversity is not going to come. It is. But cry out to him and he will be there with you in times of trouble. Because of yourself you can do nothing. But all things are possible through God himself. So praise God. That's the ending of this. And we're going to continue on. And uh, shalom on this teaching.